What else? There are going to be things that we don't agree on, and that's okay. <laughs> This is why we're doing, we're having this conversation over food. Well, we haven't found anything yet that we don't agree on, but I do really appreciate you coming out here, Francesca. You're going to be an assembly woman. You're going to have rural things come up and you've, you've, uh, you've made the effort to see what it's like out here and to hear our stories. And I think maybe field trips for all legislators would be a good idea. Absolutely. <laughs> cocktail hours maybe in our district. <laughs> well, and if it, you know, if I can entice folks to come out by saying let's we're going to cook a meal for you. I mean, most people don't pass up free food. It doesn't matter <laughs> if you're left, right, blue, black or brown. You got it, sister. Yeah, food is the way we've really gotten a lot of stuff done out here. I am um, You asked me about why I ran. The reason I ran the first time is cuz my soil sisters asked me to. <laughs> I uh, I belong to a group of about 250 women farmers. When we're not dealing with COVID, we have potlucks on each other's farms once a month. We got to know each other's operations. Um, and I will say we learned that collaboration is survival uh, out here. I have a bed and breakfast, but before I did, one of my soil sisters, Lisa Kivris, she opened one. And Lori Stern, who you might know from Cal and Quince. Yes. Lori and Leanne, um, they wanted to start a bed and breakfast. I wanted to start a bed and breakfast. So Lisa took us to her B&B. She told us all her tips and tricks. And then we both opened successful B&Bs just 15 minutes from her. <clears throat> but she was happy to share her knowledge because we all do better when we all do better. And as women farmers, we get that. And I think that one of the things that mobilized me politically was being a part of the cookie bill. The same group of women farmers wanted to ask their legislators in, um, at the Capitol to allow them to sell home-baked goods face-to-face -face at, at our farmer's markets. You know, farm portfolios, are, it's kind of like the restaurant business. Your mm -hmm. margins are they're very, 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 very thin. Mm -hmm. And if you can monetize more things off your land, you can do better. So we wanted to add baking to our farm portfolios. And it was illegal at the time. We were one of only two states where you couldn't right. bake and sell face to face. So we worked for two years to hammer out a bill with Janice Ringhand. It, it um, passed the Senate. And we were sure it was going to pass. We were up at the Capitol with our cookies and our aprons and our spatulas to take pictures. And someone came out of the assembly chambers and said, didn't want it on the agenda. So even though it had passed the Senate unanimously, gone through the committee process in both houses, Voss didn't like it. And as the speaker, he could just leave it off the agenda. And that got me irritated. We went Robin at it again. Robin Voss made you irritated? He did. Can you believe that? Holy shit. But we no. didn't give up. We asked um, a Republican yeah. to sponsor it for us because she thought it was great for small business. Um, and once again, it, didn't, it, didn't, it even, didn't even come to the floor of the assembly, passed the Senate again. So we were invited by a libertarian law firm to sue the state of Wisconsin. And, you know, I, like most people, I have a certain healthy distrust of the, all, the, all the lawsuits, right? <laughs> but we couldn't get any traction with this popular measure yeah in the legislature. So we sued, we won. Now farmers markets all over the state can have uh, home baked goods for sale. We're really proud of that. But I realized in the course of that how dysfunctional the legislature was. And I decided to run after that. And I, I had, I knew a lot of people in the Capitol from working on that bill. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people I'm excited to work with. And you're one of them. Oh. That's really sweet of you to say. I will say that it has been cool. I am all excited to see um, some of the new entrepreneurs from the Culinary Ladies Collective who have been able yes. to start off in co-op kitchens and then go to farmer's market and sell their baked goods. And now they're thinking about it is a, you know, it's, it's a controversial bill for some of the brick and mortars. And as yep. a brick and mortar owner, I will, I will talk, you know, it's not, I wasn't thrilled about it, but then what <laughs> I was able to see was Folks who are coming from uh, smaller, who, who don't always have the opportunity to start a brick and mortar right away. It was kind of a, a gateway right. for folks to be able to work out of co-op kitchens, exactly. sell at farmer's market, and now she's looking at spaces to rent. Exactly. And rurally, you know, we don't have kitchens <laughs> that we can rent. Right. And we don't, um, 
really even have brick and mortar bakeries in most of our communities. Yeah. It's really a struggle. Yeah. Um, also, getting a farmer's market start, it, it started as a challenge because you don't have enough vendors, you don't have enough traffic. And so if you can have more stuff on the table, more vendors with yeah. things, it makes things more colorful. But this is a great example of where now we know each other. Yeah. If a, if a bill like this comes up again, we get to work together to hammer exactly. out Exactly. And I can, I can talk more about what you know, the perspective of the brick and mortars, and you can talk about the perspectives of, of the world. I think this is literally how government can be functional. Exactly. And we know government is not working. I mean, no. this particular legislature hasn't worked no. um, since it was snowing. No. Um, but what about you? You've got plenty to do in your life. Why did you decide to run for office? The crises were a call to action, and I really wanted to be a voice and represent, not a voice for, but be a representation for hospitality workers, mm -hmm. for those in service, for those in the care economy, yeah. for those who don't often think that politics and government work for them right. when they absolutely do. I right. believe it is the job of the government to enable coalitions so that we all have the tools to really make our own communities thrive, and it's not doing that right now. Well, and, I really and enjoyed honestly, a lot of it was a failure in leadership, too. Yeah. And I think we need to really have a conversation about what leadership entails and what we need leadership to be. And we need leadership that understands humility, compassion, cooperation, and collaboration. Exactly. Well, you and I have small businesses. Mm -hmm. We have had employees, we have customers, and we have to deal with the constraints of not having money, not having enough hours in the day. Exactly, and, and we're constantly strategizing and figuring out creative ways to still find solutions. Exactly. And it's infuriating that the government refuses to do that right now. I agree, um, and I that, agree. That it's, and it's solely because of inaction from the GOP leadership. And so exactly. when you know what the problem is and we're unable to do something about it, um, it's, it's, I could no longer stand by. Yeah, I think we need new people coming in to show yeah. what I'm, leadership I'm, looks I'm like. I'm sick of folks saying, you know, I understand what the small businesses need. I understand what working families need. And it's, I don't think you do if you want to speak for people and if you refuse to listen to the leaders and the youth who are talking about what people need right now. Right. And how do, how do you meet those demands if you're choosing to only serve special interests and corporations and then you go into community and say, no, I actually do serve you. You don't. Right. That's exactly right. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a sad and a hard time, but it is an exciting time. It's like we're on the precipice of a lot that's new. It is. Because I think a lot of people are fed up with government not working. I think one of our biggest challenges, though, is casting vision and hope. Because mm. so many people I talk to on the phone, they really don't have hope that government can work. Yeah. And so in a, in a climate like that, that is the, really the end of democracy. So hope is job one, is, hope is and, job from, one. My, from my perspective. Hey, is this beautiful basil? We want all of that in that big bowl of yes. bread, tomatoes. Just rip it. Rip it up. Rip it up to your heart's desire. Here we go. However this is your heart is fun. telling you to do it. My heart is telling yeah. me to just get in there and sniff it all. Do it.